All right, everyone, welcome to this episode of Surely Talk. And today we're going to talk about how cancer affects the family, the dynamic of the family. And, you know, as people are fighting cancer or if one passes from cancer. So first of all, uh, my name is Mike Mulroney. I'm Kelly Duckworth. And neither one of us are doctors. Nope. Um, Nothing in the medical field. And we cover that every episode just to let you know that this is... For entertainment and educational purposes only, and this is our opinions or things that we have learned from the patients that we work with on a daily basis. Kelly, what is it we do at Shirley's Way? Shirley's Way, we are a nonprofit, um, and we help cancer patients with their everyday expenses, such as rent, mortgage, utilities, um, food, prescription medications, things that they may not be able to afford while they're battling cancer. Right, and we've given quite a bit of money away since we started. Uh, We started in 2013 and started doing a few events, and we didn't really start giving away until 2014, and we've given away over a million dollars in those formats so it's yeah it's been a it's been an interesting journey to Mm -hmm. say the least but uh, you know typically in every family and and you and I've discussed this typically in every family there's that one nucleus of the family Uh, in my case it was it was our mom Mm -hmm. Um, when she got cancer and, and passed you know, we still get together some, but not as much as we used to. Have you noticed the same thing since your mom passed? Well, we kind of, um, me and my close... You had a bunch of nosy aunts and uncles. So. <laughs> I do. I hope they hear that one, too. <laughs> no, we uh, we kind of made a pact, really, when my grandma died. My grandma was the matriarch. She didn't have cancer, but, you know, just old age. But we'd always go to dinner with her once a week and get her out of the house and things like that. And when she passed, we kind of made a pact, and we said, all right, we're going to go to dinner every week. We're going to stay, you know, stay together, this and that. Aside from your normal holidays and things, um, which my mom loved. And then when my mom passed, same thing. We were like, we're going to go every week. This is what she would want us to do. So. And you all have been doing that for a couple of years now. Actually, many more years than that. My grandma died in 2014, yeah. So, well, we've been doing it since my grandpa died, I guess, in 2011. So, yeah, 10 years. That's incredible. Once a week. Yeah, we talked about doing that, and, and, you know, you just, you usually, again, have that one, and you're kind of the leader in the family. You're, believe it or not, you probably don't realize it, but you seem to to take care of everybody. Yeah. Um, So I'm sure you're behind making sure that everybody Mm -hmm. participates. Yeah. Um, And then that's what it takes. It takes somebody like that. But, you know, my sister's... Uh, it, it's just different. Um, we all had younger kids at the time when mom passed, and and uh, it, it's just, you know, since she's there, not there anymore, she was the one that, that made sure that we all came around. And mm-hmm. sad to say, it just hasn't happened for us. Yeah, that sucks. Yeah. I so, that. Um, but anyway, it, when somebody has cancer, we talk about people need to take on new roles. And, uh, you know, everybody's got a role in their family. And the traditional family, the the wife, and this is not a traditional world, so don't shoot us <laughs> hate mail, but in a traditional family, the, the wife does certain things and the husband does certain things. But when somebody's sick, somebody's got to step up mm-hmm. um, and, and do things. And, you know, my dad used to cook a lot, and he still does, obviously, since mom's not around. And he liked to cook, and he, he always has done things like that. And, you know, my mom made sure that we all knew how to take care of ourselves, which is great. But, uh, you know, when somebody's sick, we were obviously moved out of the house. But people have to take on new roles, mm-hmm. step up, clean the dishes, put them in the dishwasher, put them up, help with the clothes. Have you noticed any of that at all? My biggest thing really was um, the bills. Was yeah. I mean, my mom was kind of the financial person, believe it or not. Um, my dad, I have a, I don't know if you all have been listening, but I have older siblings, and my parents were older. Um, so my dad's been retired literally since I was born. So he was kind of Mr. Mom, stayed home with us, cooked and cleaned, and my mom worked. And she took care of the bills and things like that. And I remember going off to college, and she had just been diagnosed with cancer. And um, I, I honestly didn't understand all the bills. You know, I had I paid my gas. I paid for things that I wanted to do. But aside from, like, a mortgage and things like that, I had no idea um, and I remember her calling one day, and she needed help paying the the phone bill. And I will never forget, I was doing it all from EKU. Got on my laptop and pulled up their, um, well, it was I was on the phone plan too. She had, it was like a $700, like, past due balance. Because she was, she couldn't afford to make the payments. She, would, she was paying late fees. I mean, that were almost as much as the bill. Wow. I mean, it was insane. And she was just like, I can't catch up. I can't do this. So then... That was probably, I guess, sophomore year of college. I was like, well, here, I'll do it. You know, just give me access to your all's bank account, and I will just take care of it from then. And I finally got them out from that rut. Um, 
And then kind of from then on out, I kind of took control of the bills. But I don't know what we would have done if I hadn't have learned that. Because my dad, he has no idea anything about technology. He, he didn't pay the bills. He wouldn't have known passwords. And, you know, for me, online banking and online, you know, bills and things are easy. But he'd probably still be trying to write a check. And Yeah, I, I can see that. <laughs> yeah. you, you probably don't know how to write a check either, do you? It would be hard. <laughs> it would be really hard. Yeah, you got to sign the check. So, yeah, but, uh, yeah I, it's um, my mom took care of all the bills. Mm-hmm. And when she passed, my older sister stepped up and... And, and set up auto payments on certain things, utility bills, and, and I don't know if they have a mortgage or not, but they set up, util, you know, all the, um, your essential stuff you have to have and set them up on mm-hmm. auto payments because she took care of it all. She wrote all the checks. I don't know that they paid bills online when my mom was alive. Um, but she wrote a lot of checks, but she had all that info. My dad didn't have a clue mm-hmm. as to what things cost and how to pay them. So you all didn't do that until after she passed? Right. Yeah, that was probably hard. It was. Um, and in some places you have to show, obviously you have to show death certificates, but it mm-hmm. was a real nightmare um, to get all that set up to where my sister could help make the bills um, because they just wouldn't wouldn't do it. And I, I get that. It's a security thing. Mm-hmm. And there's so many hackers in the world that you just never know who's telling the truth. <laughs> But, you know, you really need to sit down with people. I think in in our discussions, when your mom found out that there was nothing else they could do, she looked at your dad and said, we got some things to talk about, right? When she got diagnosed, yeah. she said that, yeah. Because she knew pancreatic cancer wasn't good. She said there's some mm-hmm. things we had to talk about. So I'm assuming they probably sat down and tried to go over that stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but your dad's a lot like mine. He probably didn't get it. No, he, he still doesn't. I mean, I love my dad to death, um, but he just, you know, there's some things. I remember the death certificates and going to the bank and trying to, you know, close out these accounts and doing that and, he probably would have figured it out eventually. He would have had to, you know, had a, a lot of help from people. But I mean, my neighbors, friends, and family—they all—they're like, we don't know what your dad would have done without you. No, I agree. You know, and my siblings, my older siblings, that wasn't their mom. You know, we have the same dad, but not the same mom. Um, and they obviously would have helped me as much as they could have, but they didn't know either. You know, none of that stuff was was any of their business. Um, so yeah, it was a lot. Well, I, I just can't imagine the the parents that don't have someone like Mm -hmm. you or my older sister to to step in and do that. Um, But you need to have those conversations. If you're not, if you're a spouse, I handle all the finances in my family and my wife knows about what, you know, but the problem is I've got all the passwords, right? They don't even know the password to the Apple account on our phones. (laughs) So they'll send me a message. What's our password? What's our (laughs) password? But you have to know those things, put them in a central location where both Mm -hmm. people know. And um, we have them safe, but I keep the link to the location and the ID and password. So, you know, it's easy for them to just click on the link because I don't click on links on the Internet these days. It's a, a hacker's paradise out there in the Web. Yeah. Um, so don't ever click on a link that comes to an email unless you're 100 percent sure it came from that company. Learn the hard way. Life lesson learned there, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. It's terrible. But the hackers are crazy. But, you know, you have to be part of that conversation mm-hmm. way before any of this thing happens. And they're awkward and they're uncomfortable. Um, I mean, people... <laughs> They don't like having them. It's tough. It is. I mean, you don't want to talk about the end, but yeah, um, knowing all that stuff ahead of time, I mean, it made my life so much easier. Yeah. I I know um, there's people that plan their own funerals Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, obviously they're go-getters. I don't know that I could do that, but you have to take into consideration the bills and things like that, uh, that most people probably never even think of until it's too late. I think my biggest thing now, if I learned anything from my mom's death, um, and obviously it's people have their own lives and they're going to do what they want to do but having a will my mom didn't have a will yeah and that's still I'm still having issues to this day and it's been you know two and a half years now um just little things that for some reason there's red tape somewhere yeah you know and if they don't have this in writing from her and I'm like I can't do anything about it you know even a death certificate doesn't fix that no wow. it's it's a lot yeah but I'm I mean I remember when she died and um It was less than two months later, my dad had a heart attack. My dad's 78, um, but he's pretty, he's healthy. I mean, he is, um, but he had a heart attack. Couldn't believe it, but it was all the stress and things like that, and he didn't have a will. And I remember when he was laying in the hospital bed, he signed a will on the back of a napkin. He just said, everything goes to you. Here's my name. Obviously, that wasn't really legal, but to him, it made him feel better, and we ended up getting one legally done. Um, But, I mean, because still, my mom, I mean... 
in the state of Kentucky, it's different. So wherever you live, obviously. But yeah, she thought in her mind everything would be left to my dad when she died. Um, but legally, 50% goes to my dad, and the other 50% was split between me and my brother. Yeah, I, it's, um, I had a friend that passed, and he never got anything changed, and he had been married since. And everything that he had went to his ex-wife. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, in the state but of Kentucky. she was happy. Yeah, the insurance, everything. And uh, it's crazy because... You know, that's just the way it is. If it's in writing, that's... But when you did the will, did you have to file it someplace to make it official or... Yeah. We have wills, but I don't know that we filed them anywhere. Yeah. Well, we had, you know, an attorney and they signed off on it and whatever that legal stuff is. I'm not a lawyer either. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> not a doctor or a lawyer. Look it up if you yeah. want to do it the right way. <laughs> and don't take our advice on no. that stuff. But yeah, it's, it's a process and it really is. And if you don't have it ironed out even as uh, you know uh, off the fi- family dynamic a little bit but even things like social media pages we had people posting stuff under my mom's account after she was dead and horrible stuff mm-hmm. horrible stuff and we couldn't get zuckerberg at facebook to kill yep. the account we had to prove uh, yep. you know death and everything Same like with that. Me. nasty nasty things were being posted under her account and i oh, wouldn't do man. anything about it that was recent for me i yeah. mean that was going on at I don't know how it happened. Phone numbers too. Yeah. It was, that was the big thing. Um, cause when my mom died, you know, I don't know if you did, but we kept her phone number for a little bit. You know, you could call it and you could listen to the voicemail and do that. whatever step of grieving you're in. Um, but then eventually there comes a time. It's not realistic to be paying for that phone line. Yeah. Um, summer we canceled it. Well, someone else got her phone number, obviously. And somehow got logged into her social media accounts and they were posting crazy stuff. And everybody, you know, thought that my mom had rose from the dead and was making Facebook posts. But, yeah. That's that was, horrible. Oh, I it remember, was terrible. I remember that Yeah, happening, it's been recent. But I didn't know how they got the account. <laughs> we were floored. And I remember trying what to go through. cruel people. I don't they? know. But I remember trying to go through Facebook and get her, like, m- you know, memorial page yeah. set up to where it's they a, would stop. It's a shame that the crook like that is protected. It's yeah. a shame you can't drive over to that person's house that's doing that and track that phone number down and confront mm-hmm. them. Because... That's just absolutely horrible. It was. It was terrible. Something like that. Well, the one other thing, too, and, and, and I'm sure you were probably this person, but you have a pretty big family. But, you know, when somebody's sick, there needs to be a point person for medical updates mm-hmm. um, because that can be a problem. Some families, you know, they don't see eye to eye on things. A friend of mine, he's dealing with some stuff that his niece signed for for his mom. It's absolutely horrible that somebody can do that. But there needs to be a front person for that. Yeah, I mean, um, one of the articles on cancer.net um, talks about how, you know, it can be overwhelming, especially I have a big family and a lot of friends. And, um, you know, when my mom would go to the hospital or something, you know, she'd have some type of side effect and something would go wrong. I mean, you'd have 25 people calling and with texting different you. different opinions. Yeah, or asking what's going on, what's what's going on with this. And you'd have to, you know, fill them in on everything. But, um, yeah, with my dad, obviously he had the final say and everything, but... That day my mom died, he sat back and he said, you know, you make the decisions, you do all that, which I ran them by him as well. But, yeah. It's bad. Yeah, it was. You know, it, 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 everybody's got an opinion, um, but they're not willing to be there and handle the stress and the grief that comes along with some of these decisions. And, you know, I had a friend that that they had a couple siblings and one of them was there all the time when the parent was was basically dying and the other one would never show up the other person just couldn't handle the grief that came along with the mom dying um and then after the death the person is still around and they do great now but the one that was there the whole time has been completely fell off the deep edge with drugs and trouble and and all kinds of stuff so it it it's amazing how the grief affects certain people yeah i mean i'll say it because i'm i'm open and i love my brother dearly um and, and he'll admit to everything but he wasn't there when my mom died and i'm kind of glad honestly i'm grateful because i didn't want him to see you know he's my older brother and i didn't want him to see her like that so i was the one that made all those you know the decisions and things but um he feels guilty he, I mean, he hates himself for it, you know, and, and he beats himself up all the time that he wasn't there. Um, but then he's also thankful that I was yeah, and not him. So, yeah. Um, th- so he, did he come and visit her at all before she passed? Nope. Yeah. I can't even wrap my head around that. No. And it, I mean, you know, he was, well, long story short, he was in jail, yeah. um, when she passed, but they got to have a phone call 
Um, and my, mo- my mom's biggest thing was, you know, making sure he was always warm and he was fit, the motherly thing, you know. And I remember my mom died at like close to midnight and it was probably five or six that, that day when she kind of stopped talking. But she had talked to him um, one last time and she asked him, are you warm? Have you ate? You know, all these things. And she knew he was safe. Yeah. But yeah, he didn't see her like that. Um, and then he didn't get to come to the funeral, obviously. But like I said, I'm kind of glad he doesn't have that picture. You know, I was the one that had to turn the machines off. And I don't know if he could have handled it, honestly. Yeah, I um, I, I, some people and it's very difficult. Um, I, I did most of the funeral planning for my mom mm-hmm. because, you know, they just they couldn't do it. And I remember sitting there trying to. <laughs> Pick caskets, and, and that's probably another episode we ought to have is the funeral planning and get a funeral person in here because you will be taken to the bank um, over your grief if you don't know what you're doing and have somebody guiding you in the right direction. Our blood pressure will probably go through the roof on that. Oh, yeah. I had, oh, man. Yeah, that's another, let's add, let's add that episode. The car salesman of death yeah. is what, I mean. That's exactly right. They will take you to oh. the bank if you don't know, all because you're grieving and you make bad decisions. But, uh, yeah, I, I remember remember sitting there planning a funeral and there's a lot of things in a funeral that you don't think and Mm -hmm. I don't understand funerals I think they ought to have an open bar and just let people come in and drink and have a good time and Mike wants open that's exactly right (laughs) I mean I don't want people standing around crying and sad because I'm gone and most people might not care that I'm gone you know but I just think that it, it shouldn't be it should be a um, a, 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 some ethnicities do celebrations of death, and that's what it should mm-hmm. be, not standing around crying all the time. So we might we might open up a Shirley's Way funeral home one day and have a bar. And, oh, my gosh. And just, yeah, really, you know, think about it. <laughs> have concerts outside. <laughs> yeah, and have a good time, celebration of life. But it is a very difficult thing sitting there by yourself. Mm-hmm trying to pick out caskets and colors and, and flowers and music. I mean, so many things. Yeah. You don't think about. Yeah. What kind of concrete you want in the vault that you put in the gasket, you know, just crazy stuff that you never think about that they can upcharge you for. So, but doing that by yourself is very difficult. Mm -hmm. Um, what to put in the obituary and it's after so many words, it's going to be an extra charge. And so, yeah, making those decisions are, are very difficult. So, um, you know, if, if, if I had any advice at all, after that, my dad actually went in and paid for, prepaid, and planned his own funeral. Yeah, um, which is, I mean, now, I think is great. Yeah. I mean, you know. You that, probably didn't think that a few years ago, but no. at this point, it really makes more sense. I remember my godfather that died of pancreatic cancer right before my mom. Um, he had, you know, all that done. He was getting cremated. It was paid for. He said, they said, as soon as he dies, you call the coroner. You know, this happens. I mean, it was done. I didn't have to make one phone call. And at first I was like, this is kind of creepy and morbid, you know, but it was so much easier on us. Yeah. You know, you didn't have to do anything. You know, it's funny you say call the corner. When my mom died, we knew she was going to die, but we never really thought about what do you do when it happens? You know, she passed and she's lying there and we're sitting there. I didn't know what to do. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, the angels of, of this world, the Hospice people, I called them and like, we don't know what to do. Mm-hmm. Um, she's passed and called the corner, yep. um, which... You know, they got to come in and propose or announce the death time and all that mm-hmm. stuff. And then the, the funeral home showed up and took her. But, yeah, that's something that I just didn't hadn't really thought about. What do you do after they pass? Mm-hmm. Do you pick them up and take them to the, the, the funeral home by yourself? I never even thought about it. Yeah. Um, but it's a very stressful point for the siblings and the family. I think my mom got a little ride around Dixie. Did she? Yeah, because we were deciding on what funeral home to go to, so she was just, you know. So you didn't have that worked out beforehand? Well, we did, but like I said, the car salesman of, of death, we, uh, yeah, wasn't going to happen with yeah. one of them. We're going to do that episode. I like that a lot. So. Yeah. Well, thanks so much today. Kelly, how can people help Shirley's Way um, if they would like to help us out to continue our mission? We would love to have you as a monthly donor. Um, 2021, we are pushing for $1,000, $10 monthly donors. So that's $10,000 a month. Um, and that would help out a lot of people in our community that need it. Um, and you can go to Shirley'sWay.org and learn more on our website. We have three um, split the pot raffles a week, Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays, queenofheartslive.org jokerswildlive.org and wheelofcashlive.org. $2 tickets. They're all split the pots. They're a lot of fun. 
Um, and those are also going back to help cancer patients as well. Yeah, get out there, win you some money, uh, go to our YouTube channel. You can watch all of our drawings live and we got patient interviews um, and just watch what we do. And thanks for listening today. We'll talk to you soon. See ya.